Welcome to another NeverEndingPanel.com. My name is Eitan Collin, and we are here at Author Services on Hollywood Boulevard. We are at the, uh, I suppose, aftermath or the ending or aftermath the wrapping is up. Aftermath a good you know, story. Recovery, survival, you know, the botched final moments of L. Ron Hubbard's Writers of the Future Award Ceremony, which is essentially a week-long event where writers from around the world are brought in, they're shown... Uh, writing uh, skills and advice from published authors, and then there's a ceremony celebrating those that have actually won the Writers of the Future Award. And sitting to my right is? Brennan Harvey. Of, or from? I'm from Huntington Beach, California, local boy. Oh, very good. So you're not from Australia? No. Woohoo, at first, okay. I, uh, I can slip and into a southern accent if you want to. Oh, not bad. <laughs> Tennessee or South Carolina? I have no idea. <laughs> it all sounds the same to me. Oh, there's such a difference. But let us not get distracted by the eloquence of the <clears throat> southern accent. Let's go ahead and say, what story did you write, and what actually brought you to this table here, besides um, a car? I wrote uh, The Truth from a Lie of Convenience, and it won. And now I'm here. There's got to be more than that. Otherwise, it's going to be a very short interview. Okay. I mean, at some point, you are sitting there. You're just sitting, okay, I think I'm just going to put words to a page. And mind you, everybody writes. You know, they write a shopping list. They write their homework. They write their this. But to go from that to actually writing words that people want to read, that people are willing to pay for, people are willing to give awards for, that's a different story entirely. How did you go from, I need milk, I need eggs, ah, uh, oh, crap, where's that doctor's appointment, to writing your story? Well, stories... Um are important. They've been around forever. And stories are a way of actually communicating things that are important to a particular person. For example, um, Orwell wrote about Animal Farm. And if you read it, it says, oh, it's a bunch of animals and there are some problems. But if you actually examine the story, it's about class structure um, and the inequal inequalities that exist in that. Ray Bradbury, you might say, oh, it's an interesting yarn about you know a policeman who's having trouble doing his job. But it's, it's about censorship. Um, and writing is a way to I expand your voice to help change the world. So is that a better answer? Yeah, <laughs> uh, but at the end of the day, how did you decide you were going to write a story, submit it, and get it in there? I read a story called um, Kiran Yaga by Mike Resnick that kind of changed my life. It um, talked about a very well-educated man who was trying to keep his culture alive even though his culture had some very barbaric aspects to it um, and at that point I w was I, I want to try to tell stories too and that started it so he was from the south no <laughs> <laughs> Shh, sorry. sorry south I apologize <laughs> it's completely uncalled for um, so uh, the question I then ask at this point is, what got you to submit this particular story to Writers of the Future? Did well, somebody say, dude, you got to do it? Did you see <coughs> something on the internet? Did you look at a magazine? Were you reading an old one of these things and volume 24, well, 21? And he said, hey, I can submit to this. The way I was introduced to the, <coughs> the contest way back in the early 90s, um, someone gave me a book, Writers of the Future. And I'm like, well, what is this about? And they said, it's this book, and there's a contest. And if you win this contest, they'll put your story in the book. And I thought, well, that's really kind of a cool idea. Um, about eight years later, I started writing. And one of the places that I remembered was the Writers of the Future. So I made my first submission, first quarter, 2004. It was a finalist. And nine submissions later, first quarter, 2010, I won. Dude, <laughs> that's just awesome. Uh, oops, it looks like we're running down, so I gotta ask the one last question that I tend to ask. Uh, the question is, um, how long have you been married? No, no, wrong question. Uh, the question is, how much is your house? No, no, wrong question again. Ah, if you were talking to an author, sorry, a writer, somebody who's just thinking, eh, well, he did it, but, you know, that's just a different thing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they're out there right now on the joy of the internet, so you could be watching this in any country at any time from here on into the next thousand years. What do you say to them? Um, it's not, it's just me. Anybody can win this contest. I won this contest, you can win this contest. Believe in yourself. 
practice your craft. Um, and if that's writing 100 stories and getting 100 rejections in a year, do that. You will get better. And if you believe in yourself and you submit and you don't give up, you will win this contest just like I won this contest. All right. Uh, last thing, ladies and gentlemen, is there are illustrations <coughs> that go with each of the stories because it's not only writers of the future, it is illustrators of the future. And can you tell us about this illustration? This is the grand prize, and I'm so proud. His name is um, Erwin Rodriguez, and I believed my story was complete. Um, everything was there that needed to be there. This is that extra dollop that makes the story complete. So I submitted a complete manuscript. He made a complete story. Um, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank for you. Up. Thank you very much. No Appreciate it. All right, get up. <laughs>